There's the age old question, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, I assure you, if a tree limb falls on your windshield and cracks it, it's gonna make a sound even if you don't hear it. And regardless, you're gonna be replacing your windshield just as we did on this Mazda 6 back here. We're gonna go through the process of calibrating that camera next. Thanks for tuning in and watching this one where we're gonna be doing a Mazda 6 calibration on the front windshield camera. The windshield has been replaced by factory glass. Keep in mind that's important. More and more manufacturers are coming out with TSBs on a regular basis, stressing the importance of using factory glass. One of the reasons why is that aftermarket glass can skew or cause a miscalibration on your camera. So we've got a new windshield installed on our Mazda and we're gonna go through the process of calibrating that front camera. First thing we're gonna do is like we always done in the past, we've got our VCI hooked up to our DLC and I'm gonna get into diagnostics and read the VIN. So we're dealing with a 2020 Grand Touring Mazda 6. This procedure will apply for all Mazda vehicles currently on the road right now. We've cycled the ignition as requested. First thing you wanna do before you begin any ADOS calibration is go ahead and do a pre-scan. I'm gonna select all the modules and let our ADOS link check for any DTCs that could be related to the camera being replaced or could cause a problem in our calibration as we do this. So our scan is in progress. Hurry up and wait. Always goes a lot faster though when they edit this. Our pre-scan has completed and I don't have any DTCs in my forward sensing camera. Our report has been saved in our ADOS link. So we'll have a pre-scan. We'll also have a calibration report. And of course, we will also do a post-scan at the end of our calibration to verify there are no DTCs. All of those reports will be saved in our ADOS link and can be printed off or emailed to the customer to show everything that was done along the way. Now that we know that we're good, we're gonna go into our ADOS calibration and we're gonna select front facing camera. You're gonna see some unique things that might pop up that you haven't seen before right now. You have four options here and this is very similar to the Ford procedure where you're gonna have as built manual configuration and programming module installation. Those are two things that you might not have seen before. These are related to the fact that if you had to replace the actual camera in the windshield, one of them will allow you to replace the camera after you've saved the data. Another one will allow you for the as built to input the data if your camera was damaged beyond repair and you couldn't get the actual programmable module installation, the PMI, to go through. We don't have to worry about that. Our camera surprisingly wasn't damaged during the windshield replacement. But we do have two other ones here. We have forward sensing camera calibration, dynamic and static. Dynamic you've probably seen in the past and dynamic means we drive the vehicle and we would follow the instructions as they are outlined on the ADOS link to verify speeds, look for different lines, see different road signs, sees different cars. It's a procedure that is done when you drive it. And again, all you would do is follow the procedures on the ADOS link. It's relatively simple. But here, let's go ahead and do the static where we're gonna use the ADOS link and the DOS 3000 so that you can see the actual calibration done with the boards. This is a nice way to do it while you're in the shop instead of driving it. I do prefer to do it this way when I have the option. It's also a lot safer you're not on the roads and dealing with the people that sometimes can be out on the roads, if you know what I mean. So we're gonna go ahead and do the static and walk through that step by step. First thing that always shows up on our ADOS link is the required equipment. We'll need some Mazda boards, our wheel clamps, our DOS 3000 rack, of course our ADOS link and a front bumper guard. We'll go ahead and press continue and you're gonna see us use all of these as we go along. Remember this is used to adjust the camera. So we're gonna go ahead and do the step-by-step -step instructions. I'm not gonna press skip because then 
we'd be done with the video and I don't think you really want that. You wanna watch how I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna perform this when the ECU or the camera is replaced, when the windshield is replaced, such as the one on our vehicle here, DTCs, TSBs, things like that would also be some of the reasons that you may have to calibrate this. Required preconditions. These are on every single ADOS we do. They are outlined every time you do one and they're no different than any other ones. Level surface, good lighting. Make sure your tires are the correct size, correct PSI. They don't want any static boards anywhere around. Make sure your paint on the walls is okay too, that you don't have any grid showing up. So no checkerboards, anything like that, that the camera could pick up. So these are all preconditions that make sure you pay attention to so that you can successfully calibrate this. We'll press continue. We're gonna do the guided tour summary here. And now we're gonna hook up our cameras. You can see our cameras are now set up. And of course, 1600 millimeters showed right up on the ADOS link that is the required distance that we will ultimately be away from the vehicle when we're done. That is a factory setting that is correct. I do not need to change that. I'll press done and continue. Now it's gonna ask us to install our wheel clamps on the rear wheels. Remember, make sure your bubble level on top of these is centered and your boards are straight up and down. We're gonna go ahead and press continue now. You can see the cameras are looking for the target boards and now it's also asking us to push all the way to the bumper with our DOS 3000 rack and we've got our front bumper plate already installed. So we're just gonna go nice and slow. I'm gonna use the emblem of the vehicle as my center point. Nice and slow. I'm gonna get it right here. All right, we're against our front bumper. I centered it with the Mazda logo right there. I'm gonna go ahead and press continue. And now we're gonna come back with our DOS 3000 using our yeah, you know, our kind of a guide right there until we center it exactly where it likes to be. Sometimes getting these set up perfectly is the hardest part of the whole situation. We're in position, let's go ahead and press continue. It's gonna ask us to lock the DOS 3000 into position. All right, we're gonna go ahead and set our target pitch. Position two, check your bubble level, adjust as required to make sure that you're straight up and down. Now we're gonna install our crossbar at a height of 140 centimeters. And we'll also make sure that it is level. There is a bubble level on these. and your scale is on both sides of the DOS 3000 rack. Right at 140, checking for level, adjust and tweak as required. And we're gonna press continue. And we're going to make sure that it's level, which we've already done. Now we're gonna install our target boards. Mazda set two at 50 centimeters. And we're gonna slide it right to the 50. That's on our scale on our crossbar.
We've got it set up exactly how it likes to be. Right now, we'll press continue. Disconnect your USB and move away from the calibration area. So I'm gonna take a couple steps back before I press continue. All right, let's go ahead and press continue. Turn ignition off then on, we'll do that real quick. My camera guy will let me know before I press continue. I can press continue, he said. Calibration is in progress, please wait. It's very polite of them to ask me please though, which I do appreciate. Thanks, Hunter. We're gonna turn the ignition back to the off position, getting in my steps today. Ignition is off, I'll press continue. And now you have one full minute of waiting as our countdown has begun. So we're at, it was at, it's about a minute. They have you turn it off. It's one unique thing about Mazda, I guess, is the amount of time that they have you actually keep the ignition off before we're gonna turn it back on. And ultimately, hopefully it says successful calibration. Couple more seconds and I should be able to turn this ignition back on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn the, the ignition back on. Continue, please wait. Again, polite, it's nice. Got my steps in, they're polite. And ultimately it's gonna say successfully completed, which it did. Excellent, so this calibration was successfully completed. Our report has been saved to our ADOS link right now. So we have our pre-scan done, we have our calibration report as well. As with any calibration that you do, your next most important step is to test drive the vehicle and verify the operation of the system before you return it back to the customer. Once you've done that, go ahead and do your post scan as well, verifying there are no DTC set that could have been happening after or during the calibration and that it is ultimately safe to the return to the customer. So we're back to our ADOS calibration home screen. We've been kicked back out meaning that we were successful. For any more ADOS videos, make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube page where you can find tons of videos using the DOS 3000 and the ADOS link on a host of different vehicles that you may have run into your shop when you're doing these. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go test drive and we'll see you next time.